Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, you've taught us that in repentance and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, by your providence, the lives of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Grant that we who remember before you the blessed martyrs of Uganda may, like them, be steadfast in our faith in Jesus Christ, to whom they gave their obedience even to death, and by their sacrifice brought forth a plentiful harvest through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading of the day comes from the book of Habakkuk. Alas for you who get evil gain for your house, setting your nest on high to be safe from the reach of harm. You have devised shame for your house by cutting off many peoples. You have forfeited your life. The very stones will cry out from the wall and the plaster will respond from the woodwork. Alas for you who built a town by bloodshed and found a city on iniquity. Is it not from the Lord of hosts that peoples labor only to feed the flames, and nations weary themselves for nothing? But the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the day is Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, God regards the lowly. But the haughty God perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill God's purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The second lesson appointed for the day comes from the letter to the Hebrews. But recall those earlier days when, after you'd been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and persecution, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion for those who were in prison, and you cheerfully accepted the plundering of your possessions, knowing that you yourself possess something better and more lasting. Do not, therefore, abandon that confidence of yours. It brings a great reward. For you need endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet, in a very little while, the one who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. But we are not among those who shrink back and so are lost, but among those who have faith and so are saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Magi heard the king Herod, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, of frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they left up, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child and destroy him. And then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So today we celebrate that um, on June 3rd, 1886, 32 young men, pages in the court of King Mwanga of Buganda, were burned to death at Namugongo for their refusal to renounce their Christianity. In the following months, many other Christians throughout the country died by fear, fire or spear for their faith. And these martyrdoms totally changed the dynamic of Christian growth in the country of Uganda. Introduced by a handful of Anglican and Roman Catholic missionaries after 1877, the Christian faith had been preached only to the immediate members of the court by order of King Mutisa. His successor, Mwaganda, began, became increasingly angry as he realized that the first converts put loyalty to Christ above the traditional loyalty to the king. Martyrdoms began in 1885, including Bishop Hannington and his companions. Uh, we celebrate their ministry on October the 29th. Mwanga first forbade, every, forbade anyone to go near a Christian mission on pain of death, but finding himself unable to cool the ardor of the converts, he resolved to wipe out Christianity completely. The Namugandu martyrdoms res- produced a result entirely opposite to Mwanga's intentions. The example of these martyrs who walked to their deaths singing hymns and praying for their enemies so inspired many of the bystanders that they began to seek instruction from the remaining Christians. Within a few years, the original handful of converts had multiplied many times and spread far beyond the court. The martyrs had left the indelible impression that Christianity was truly African, not simply a white man's religion. Most of the missionary work was carried out by Africans rather than by white missionaries, and Christianity spread steadily. Uganda remains the most Christian nation in Africa, and... um, Renewed by persecution of Christians by a military dictatorship in the 1970s proved the vitality of the example of the Namugongo martyrs. Among the thousands of new martyrs, both Anglican and Roman Catholic, was Donani Luam, Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Uganda, whose courageous ministry and death inspired not only his countrymen, but also Christians throughout the world. Uh, Today we mourn their loss. Today we celebrate... Uh, their courage to embrace their faith, even at the point of personal loss. This, I think, is not something many of us are going to have to face in our lifetimes. Um, Persecution because uh, of a particular creed, a doctrine of faith. And so I think, I hope, and I pray that those who have gone before us inspire us to embrace what it means to live out the gospel right now at a time of extremely um, tense anxiety from COVID-19, of extreme tension um, that has been decades, um, hundreds of years in the making in our country because of race and um, the need for racial reconciliation, which these martyrs embodied. And I wonder if it isn't our call to not be afraid of, frankly, inconvenience that we are poised to suffer. Inconvenience, not threat to life. Inconvenience to say, listen, those policies are not okay. These lives matter. Listen, the best practice is for us to wear masks. I can do that inconvenience. These martyrs in Uganda were willing to give their very life, and we're asked to share our life with others so that they might enter into larger life right here and right now, and to do it with the faithful conviction that God is able to do a whole lot, even with small, small efforts. Like you, I am struggling to figure out how to make a difference right now, how to help racial reconciliation, how to listen to my neighbor and love people who will carry masks in their hand and refuse to wear them. These martyrs invite us to not grow weary of that struggle because we can, but to embrace that inconvenience and to invite others into sustainable life, to larger life, to reconciliation, to say, listen, 
God cares for the lives we have on earth now, and we intend to do something about it. God is able to effect reconciliation after we die. and Why should we wait until that time? This is not just a time to look within, although it certainly is. It is also a time to be creative, to figure out how to reach out. Friends, being bothered, I think, is probably a first step. But if it is our only step, it will only lead us further into division, to fear and hatred. We are called upon, like these people who so bravely stood, uh, these 32 martyrs of Uganda, to bear witness, not with uh, just our words and with deconstructing what isn't working, but to build something new in God's name. To construct something new. To reach out in reconciliation and unity and hope. So I invite you, please, to let your disappointment, your anger and your fear, even your outrage, to not stop there, but to motivate you to work about God's reconciliation on earth. Please join me in the litany of healing. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers or petitions, silently or aloud. Most notably today, um, we remember that More than 100,000 Americans have now died from COVID-19 and that this particular weekend was a special day as our Muslim brothers and sisters have just celebrated Eid al-Fatur and we have celebrated, of course, uh, Pentecost in the Christian Church and our Jewish brothers and sisters have celebrated Shavuot. This is a time for unity as we mourn those who we have lost from this crisis and as we mourn Uh, the loss of lives of people like George Floyd. Loving God throughout creation, you show your will for all people as health and fullness of life. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Incarnate one who lives among us, in Jesus you came that all might have life and have it more abundantly. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Life-giving Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled in mind, body, or spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them compassion and wisdom, patience and skill. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your spirit more than a hundred thousand of those who are now bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bring to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life, heal us and make us whole. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness might be transformed by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and the world you have created. 
We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. The Almighty Lord, who has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith return to God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And now the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.